What's up, folks? So I built this app that I wanted to share with you folks that I think is it's not cool because it's not really new. It's not really my idea either, but it's it's a cool idea, I think. I think that the idea is cool, so that's why I want to share with you folks. And the idea is that you can zoom in in a paper uh, to like see the same content at different levels of abstraction. So imagine you, you're reading a paper, but it's like a lot of words, it's a lot of text, and you're like feeling overwhelmed. So the idea, is would, the idea would be to have a slider on top, like the one I'm going to show you right here. And you could zoom in at the level of complexity that you want to read that paper in. So here, I just, I'm loading this very silly demo that I prepared beforehand, just to give that idea of what that would be like. So this would be like a page of a PDF that I'm uh, opening in the browser, because if anyone in the comments knows how to properly do a nap for reading PDFs, I would love to know how to do that. So let me know in the comments. But the idea would be you have a slider here, and then when I move the slider, you get these uh, different summaries at different levels. So this is the simplest, simplest summary level you can get. So just a sentence, like a headline. So this is this paper is about self-efficacy as a key factor in learning achievement, influencing effort, persistence, and success. That's the silly headline. And then you could have a level where, okay, so you get a little bit more information. So this is a second level of a summary. So it affects choices, tasks, persistence, et cetera, engage more, work harder, achieve higher levels due to self-perception of capability, drive to personal success, et cetera. So it's kind of like a discussion about growth mindset and stuff like that. Effective self-regulation and achievement behavior closely linked to learner self-efficacy, but also influenced by knowledge, skills, outcome, expectations. I'm a big fan of meta, if you don't know my channel. I'm a big fan of like thinking about how we learn and how we think. Sometimes I do think that I kind of fall into this weird loop of just going to through these meta things and I never actually do anything, but that's just my self-deprecating perception of myself. And you can move the slider and then see things at different levels. This one would be a level where you have these bullet points that you can't see here very well because the way that I'm rendering this in the browser is horrible, but you would have these different bullet points structured with the content of the paper page in a way that's more informative and simple to digest than just the entire text in your face. And that's it. And then these levels, uh, although maybe it's not super clear when you look at it from this perspective, the idea is that these different levels, they do different things in terms of summary. And we'll discuss that in a notebook in just a second. But this one, this last one is kind of like uh, dividing things into like introduction, development, uh, conclusion, etc. Right. So the idea that I think is pretty neat is to uh, is this idea of having different levels of summarization and you use those different levels of summarization as a tool to digest the paper at your own pace. Okay, so the idea would be to have a PDF reader that can kind of allow you to zoom in on a paper and instead of being like this visual zoom, it would be like a semantic summarized zoom and you use large language models to do this kind of summarization. So I think that could be interesting in many different ways. Even uh, Mac has like a tool that does something like that, more or less. And uh, I think it's interesting. Uh, the problem is when you're reading a paper, you don't want to wait for a few seconds to give just a summary of a small piece of, of a page. Uh, if you're using ChatGPT API, for example, you would have to wait a little bit. So the idea would be how can we use faster models that have similar levels of you know accuracy and capability but get the speed from those more local models, but at the same time, uh, not losing accuracy and performance in terms of the summarization itself. So that's why I thought about Grok and uh, Mixtro 87B, 7B8, I never remember the name, but we'll see in a second. And the idea with that is that Grok is super fast. I have no idea why, I have no idea what's going on there that they make it super, super fast, but it is super duper fast. And I built this little app that I want to share with you folks where I try to implement some of these ideas. So I'm going to break down what this app is doing. Um, and I'm going to break down with the app actually showing on the left, which I think is the most informative way of doing this. So here's what's going on. Uh, I'm going to come here and I'm going to come here on the this thing. Yeah, and I'm going to say Streamly Run Semantic Zoom App. Okay, pretty neat. Yep. And now I'm going to put this on the left. So I have this little simple app here. 
and I have this bulk generate thing and I have this prototype thing, right? And what I'm doing is this. Uh, if I click here on prototype, you're going to see some weird stuff, but the idea is that you input some piece of text here, all right? And you get a summary and you have a slider and the slider allows you to have a summary of that content in these different levels of summary, right? Then the question becomes, okay, but what are these different levels of summarization? And that's a big complicated question for linguistics and you know it's a bit beyond my technical capabilities or i have no idea how to abstract and structure the levels of the levels of a summarization so what i do is just intuitively i try to do a little bit of research to understand like what would be the like in more interesting ways to organize summaries so that when you go from simple to complex you're actually moving up in the actual ladder of complexity in some meaningful way so what i mean by that is uh, I have a prompt here, a system prompt describing our tool. And this uh, the system prompt has some structure that's done in a way so that allows us to build this kind of tool, right? So at summarization, uh, summarization level one, you have like a headline summary. That means just a 10, 20 words summary with a single, um, sorry, I should have written that better, with a single sentence bullet point that captures the overarching theme of what's being said, etc., right? So this is summary level one. So we can see that in action here, hopefully. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here, PDF contents. Uh, I'm actually just gonna use the actual paper because it's uh, I think it's probably more instructive like that. I'm gonna use yeah, I'm gonna use a different paper than I did for my testings. So I'm gonna just fetch. Okay, so this is a paper called Any Tool that came out in, uh, last month in 2024 uh, this year. So I'm going to just fetch, uh, let me see, I want to fetch this, I want to fetch just the first two pages maybe. Okay, so I have a lot of content here all the way up to part one, okay? So I'm going to control C on this and I'm going to paste it here, beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, and I realize now that I don't have a summary button, so I'm going to add a summary button here. Uh, so the idea would be if I move the slider, so you get a summary, right, with the Grok model, which is super fast. And um, although this is being a bit silly, what this thing should be doing is, yeah, so this is giving me summary level two, sentence level summary. So, okay, okay, okay. So I have no idea if this is giving me, yeah. So sometimes I get different results. So right now, what the model is doing is actually explaining to me the summary levels instead of just uh, giving me just one summary type. But we'll we'll get into that. So this is summary level one, right? Any tool, a GPT-4 powered agent for API utilization, outperforms existing models in two utilization. All right. So any tool is a model that uses GPT-4 to teach you know large language models how to use tools properly using some APIs and stuff. Cool. And then summary level two, you have this sentence level summary which is something that looks like this. Uh, uh, an agent designed to leverage 16,000 APIs for addressing queries, outperforms methods like 2LLM and GPT-4 variant because it's tailored for tool utilization. All right, so this is summary level two, okay? This is kind of like the idea. Summary level three. Uh, summary level three is a uh, yeah paragraph level summary. So it's a bunch of bullet points uh, and each bullet point in a sentence or headline captures the overarching team or main point for each paragraph in the text so the idea is you take some text as input and the model will for each paragraph generate a very simple summary of that paragraph that's why you get uh, like a structure of like little parts because for this page we had the introduction and then we had a little bit of information about which models this any tool model is outperforming uh, so any to address queries using a hierarchical API retriever solver etc outperforms to LLM GPT-4 variant etc okay so this is the summary level three. And then for summary level four is when you go for just a one paragraph. So this is gonna be like a bulk of text, but it's just one simple paragraph, giving all the, the main juice of that particular piece of text, particular piece of information, okay? So this is the this is the description of the summary. And the reason why I put it on the system prompt is because I wanna treat uh, the model itself like a tool. And when you do that at the system prompt level, it's very nice because you don't have to keep repeating that. You can just give the input in the prompt. And supposedly, right, the idea is that the model will apply the 
uh, reasoning and the logic that you set in the system prompt. That doesn't always work super duper well, but you know it works pretty well. And there are even now uh, frameworks that are based on this basic simple idea that you can use the system prompt to make to turn a large language model into a tool, right? Like an utility thing. Uh, so that's summary level four. And then summary level five, you get like a slightly better summary. Something that I looked up, it was called executive summary, which is like a, something more actionable, right? Uh, and then um, structured summary is one of my favorite because it's uh, you get this uh, you structure stuff in a way. So in this case, we're structuring stuff in introduction method results and conclusion, but that's not necessarily how you would structure a summary. So you do that. Uh, we're doing this in this example because it was in the description of the summary and because this is a paper, right? So it makes sense to structure it in introduction methods, results, conclusion. This is the example that I gave to the model in the system prompt, but I did mention that this is not the only way to do it. This is just one example of how to structure something, in this case, how to structure a paper, right? And then summary level seven is like a detailed summary, which is about, all right, so you write as much text as you can, like in a paragraph, putting the summary in some level, okay? So if I go to, but what I wanted to show is the idea of the slider. So there you go. So now we're gonna be moving up the ladder of abstraction in this uh, summary. So hopefully when I go back to one now, it gets me a better, it's not, for some reason, it's actually giving me this description rendition instead of just giving me the summary levels. I just want the summary itself. Because the idea is, look, when I move the slider, we use the model and because the model is very fast, uh, we can, uh, it's kind of like, it would be like a zooming thing. It would be like zooming in on a paper. So we can go up the letter abstraction, right? And now there you go. We start to get more information. So this would be, I think, this is summary level three. So paragraph level with bullet points. And now summary level four. Summary level four is like this one paragraph summary. Summary level five would be executive summary, which is like a slightly bigger paragraph because it has more information. Then we go summary level six would be the structured summary. There we go. Introduction, background, any tool. So this time we got a little bit more information, so more structure even, which is nice. This would be kind of like doing like a summary for the table of contents of the paper, which is this idea, right? This is the idea. This would be in a PDF tool where you know you get a summary of the contents in the level of difficulty and complexity that you want to read the paper in. Right? So imagine you being able to zoom in and out of a paper. So this is an idea that I saw in a really cool presentation at the AI engineer conference that I will, if I remember, I'll put a link in the description because it's pretty cool. I think it was from the folks that work at a company called Adept. They're trying to do like agents for the browser type of uh, automations, which is pretty neat. I like their idea. I, I think I'm on their wait list. I'm not sure, probably. I'm in so many wait lists, it's, uh, it's borderline dysfunctional, but all right. And, uh, and we can go up, so we can go, okay, so I like it, so let's go one level up more, so we get the paragraph level summary, right? This is the detail summary, and that's it. In the system prompt, I, I describe how I want the output to be, so this is text input, and then summary level, etc. And I have some helper functions here. One is to save stuff to JSON because I have the save summary option that I can save the summary when I like it. And uh, I have a function to do the summarization with the error key. And it's cool because I have an option to do with Grok, but I also have an option to do with the actual TragicD model using whatever model I want. Uh, and I use that because, you know, uh, I was using this to experiment with different summary, uh, with different large language models and check out the quality of the output between different models. And I found that, you know, this summary is at par with GPT-4, uh, but it's so much faster. So it, it makes sense to use it because when you're, when you're trying to consume content well, you don't want to be waiting for anything. You want to be like, when you want some information, you want to be able to get it immediately. That's why speed is so important, especially for knowledge type apps and knowledge type automations. That's my perspective. And so, yeah, I have this little function that does the summaries and then we have a little bit of the app itself. So this thing goes and does the, the checkboxes for the prototype stuff. 
and versus there's the bulk generate option, which is if I come here and I call bulk generate, I can select my model, I can select the text. So I think, yeah, there you go. I can select the text. So this is the text, and then I can save that to a JSON file. And then bulk generate summaries means that I will generate all of those summaries at once. And I was using that so that I could put the summaries in a, um, uh, in a browser page, like an index HTML page, so that I can show you folks like a demo that's cooler because you see it on the page really fast. So if I come here and I call bulk generate summaries, it's super fast to generate, as you can see. It's like, it's insanely fast to generate all of these summaries. And the cool thing about it is that now, uh, you know, when I wanted to present this idea, I can come here and I can say, um, I can come here and I can say live server. And there you go, we have the content there. And then I can navigate through those summaries here. So this should not be summary level one. So there's a mistake there. This is summary level one, which is just a headline. And then this is the structured summary, if I'm not mistaken. So the order is a bit mixed up. I don't know why. Yeah, I have no idea why the order is mixed up, to be completely honest. But when you read it here, you can see all the, the levels organized properly. So you have the level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, level six, level seven. I think that summary one was uh, mixed up because for some reason, when it goes for summary level one, it gives me the all of the levels and I have no idea why. Uh, but then you have, this is actual summary level one. This, uh, there's sentence level summary that should be somewhere. But yeah, you get all of these levels of summarization. I still have to tune in on both the quality and how this thing would be used. My idea now is to use it from the terminal along with other tools that I have to do different things regarding uh, knowledge processing. You know, things like summarizing your notes or organizing your notes, tagging your notes, extracting information from your notes, transforming your notes. And I think there's a lot of interesting things to do with this. And one of my favorite um, repositories right now to take a look is from Daniel Misler, I think it's his name. He created this repo called Fabric, which I will put a link in the description if I remember as well. And it's super cool. Essentially, I'll, I'll, I'll set it up here so you folks take a look. So essentially, Fabric is advertises this open source framework for augmenting humans using AI. It has a modular framework for solving problems using crowdsourced AI. It's really cool. I, I saw his intro video and I've been playing around with this uh, automation. And the idea is that you can, you know, take something like a paper and you can, in the terminal, use these little modules defined with system prompts from a large language model. And you can do different things with regarding content that I think is just absolutely, I think it's really cool. It's really fascinating. I'm really into it. So you have patterns for doing things like extracting information from YouTube videos, writing essays, summarizing information, crafting. So I've been kind of trying to see how much of those patterns I actually use. And maybe I'll do some open source contribution to this uh, platform because I really like this idea. I think it's a, it touches upon a very really interesting topic, which is to use LLMs as to, to break down the tasks that we do into these little chunks of actions, right? And the author discusses these chunks of patterns. I think it's up top. Yeah, has this image that I really like that I'm probably gonna teach in one of my live trainings, which is about the components of the problems that we have and you break things down into these little parts and summarization at different levels. I think it's one example of these different components for the problem of understanding a paper, right? So it's really fascinating. I'll put a link in the description. Check out this uh, repository, it's super neat, okay? And uh, I think for now, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Cheers.